Hi there, I'm Rob Anderson, an accounting prof at Thompson Rivers University in British Columbia, uh, city of Kamloops. So um, I find lots of questions coming from students uh, concerning the sale of land uh, when they're doing a consolidation. And I think the reason is that land works differently from intercompany sale of merchandise or intercompany sale of property, plant, and equipment not including land, of course. And I think the reason is that land does not depreciate and it's not necessarily resold the next year, such as um, ending inventory profits. So I've got an example here that we can go through for the intercompany sale of land and how to account for that in the year of the sale and in subsequent years and also in a year perhaps when the company you sold it to finally sells it to an external party. So let's have a look at this. Um, I'm using IFRS, and here's our scenario. So our subsidiary owns land uh, purchased years ago for $100,000. And they sell it to us in year five for 700,000. And of course, the first thing to do is calculate our unrealized profit, which I'm sure is pretty easy to do. So we have an unrealized profit of 600,000. It's unrealized because it was sold within the consolidated entity and not to external parties. Now, I've just made up a tax rate here. Let's say the tax is 30%, so we have to find tax on that. And we have tax then of $180,000. And then we calculate the difference between those two, and our after tax profit becomes. $420,000. So let's see how to deal with this on a consolidation. So when we calculate consolidated net income, I know there's a lot going on, but what I've got down here on this slide is, you know, essentially just the part for land. So I would take parent net income and then there would be any necessary adjustments to parent net income, could be dividends of the subsidiary, could be uh, unrealized or realized profit on sales of inventory, a number of things. But the next section will be your sub net income. So I've made this number up. It came from nowhere in this scenario. I only did it so we could show you subtracting the after-tax unrealized profit on the sale of the land. So after tax, this is the amount of sub income. And of course, I know in a normal consolidation, if we were doing a whole question, you would have a number of other things either being deducted or added to this number. But this is just the land. Okay, so again, this number is just made up so we can show you that the unrealized after tax profit is coming off. So that's your calculation and not the income statement. When we do calculations, we use the after-tax number so that we don't sort of have to subtract 600 and add back 180. We just use the 420 to begin with. So on the actual year five income statement, these are the changes that you're gonna see. The gain on sale of land that is in the sub individual company financial statements needs to be eliminated. So on their income statements, they have an account called gain on sale of land. What happens is here's their gain minus the unrealized gain, which is all of it, equals zero. Now, as you know, we don't normally put a zero on the income statement, but underneath it, it's still a zero and it has been eliminated. Then the income tax that they paid in terms of the consolidated entity was paid in advance because we're not recognizing the revenue, so we're not gonna recognize the expense either. So our income tax expense on the income state statement is parent plus sub minus 180,000. Now you'll notice that we eliminated a 600,000 gain but we also eliminated a $180,000 expense. The net effect is that your income in year five 
drops by 420,000 on a consolidated basis. So let's look at the balance sheet. And this balance sheet is actually for year five and actually every year until the land is sold to outsiders or external parties. So this balance sheet is gonna sit here like this. If we look at the asset account land, the balance is gonna be parent plus sub minus the before tax unrealized profit. So we don't deal with the tax yet. The land account, therefore, is P plus S minus 600,000. And that takes the land account and drops it $600,000. Then we have a deferred tax asset for the $180,000. And this kind of matches the, the drop in income tax expense when the land is perhaps finally sold to an external party, we will then charge the tax and lose this deferred tax asset. But for now, you'll notice that your assets have gone down a total of 420,000. And that 420,000 matches the drop in retained earnings through your income statement. So, you know, assets still equal liabilities plus equity. So these are the two balance sheet accounts that are affected specifically, but when you put in the figure for consolidated retained earnings, it will already have this amount deducted. Now, in following years, here's what happens. When you calculate consolidated retained earnings, that 420 net after-tax profit is still sitting there in the retained earnings amount for your subsidiary. So every single year, you have to take $420,000 off of that amount. So your sub is minus 420 every single year if you're using the cost method. And the cost method is what we use here. It's actually just easier, so we do it. Now, in later years, here's a, a common error students make. They, they, try to, they try to sell this land again and again. You only hit the income statement one time, and that's in the year of sale. So that unrealized gain relates only in this example to year five. There is no income statement effect at all in following years. So here's what we're left with. In following years, those two changes that we had before are still sitting in the asset side of the balance sheet. And the net effect is that assets are lower by 420,000. So every single year, we still have this deferred tax asset of 180. Every single year, land is overstated, so we drop at $600,000. And every single year, we have dropped or lowered our retained earnings to account for the elimination of the 420 after-tax profit. Now, what about when we sell it? When we finally sell the land, and I've, I've gone you know four years ahead and just assume that we sold the land in year nine to an external party, that means the previous unrealized profit of 600,000 has now been realized. So, there is an income statement effect this year. And remember, the sub sold the land to the parent company. So the parent sold it, in this example, for a million dollars. The parent paid 700,000 for that, just sold it for a million dollars. So on the parent's books, there's a $300,000 profit. But recall that the cost of this land to the consolidated entity was 100,000, and we have this previous amount of 600,000 withheld profit that we have now earned or realized. So the total profit on this land is now 900,000. However, the first 300 here 
is just sitting there on the books of the parent as gain on sale of land. So we don't do anything with that number. So don't try to change the parent's books for that 300,000. That's good all the way. That's good the way it is. So here's the income statement effect. First, if you're doing a calculation of consolidated net income, note that your subsidiary was the original seller. So the after-tax profit of 420,000 is added to sub's income. Now, in the next slide, I've just made up some numbers again. So don't worry if some of those you haven't seen before. I've just here's a calculation of net income. I've just assumed that the sub made 2.4 million net income, and here we are adding back that realized profit on the sale of land, realized because it was sold to an outsider. So it gives us a revised number for sub income, and you need this as part of your calculation of consolidated net income. Now remember, this calculation has a lot of other things going on, but we're focusing on just this one item. So on your year nine income statement, there is a gain on the sale of land, and this is the 300,000 that the parent gained plus the 600,000 that was realized this year for a total of 900,000 on your consolidated income statement. Now, your income tax expense is parent plus sub plus the 180,000 tax that is previously or was previously held back based on this unrealized profit. So remember Originally, we had reduced tax expense. Now we're recognizing that tax expense of 180. Now, when you put these two together, the net effect is that the 420,000 net amount has been earned on a consolidated basis. So your consolidated net income is now 420 higher. Now, the fun part about this is kind of funny, but the fun or odd part, depending on how you want to look at it, is the balance sheet effect. And the reason I say that is the balance sheet almost takes care of itself. There's almost nothing for you to do when you do the consolidated balance sheet that's related to the land. So notice that the parent sold the land, right? So the, the land itself no longer exists on the consolidated balance sheet. It's gone. The parent now has a million dollars of cash or receivables or a note receivable instead. So because the land is not there anymore, there's no adjustment to do. Now there may be other land owned by the parent and other land owned by the sub. Basically, in terms of this particular piece of land, you don't have to do anything because it's gone. Let's look at the calculation of consolidated retained earnings. Well, what you used to do is take away 420,000 every year, but now it's been earned. So you don't have to do anything there either. The retained earn earnings no longer has an adjustment for unrealized profit on land. And then we get to the deferred tax asset account that you set up before and since we've recognized the tax expense, you have used up your 180,000 deferred tax asset, so that's gone too. You don't have to do anything there either. So when we look at the balance sheet, at first you might think, oh man, what do I have to do? Well, you know, in essence, you don't do anything because all of these adjustments just kind of take care of themselves when you do that consolidated balance sheet. So that's kind of the the nice part about selling that land. Now you don't have to deal with it anymore. Anyway, that's it for now. See you next time.